Hello everyone, this is Noble H. Mustack, and today we are here with another math problem from Me Too, Round 2, Sequences and Series, November 2011, problem number 3. And this is the first math problem video I've made in 4 months. In that time, I've learned a lot of math, because I've been reading math textbooks from Abstract Algebra and Linear Algebra. And, yes, that's why I haven't been making videos. But now I'm back, and I'm going to probably make one video for each round in the regular season. So, th th next, this is, I'm doing sequences in series right now. Next, I'll do uh, counting principles and binomial theorem. And this is all me too. And then I'll do polynomials. And then I'll do areas and volumes. And then I'll go on to meet three. Let's see, areas and volumes. So you can see. Okay. And then I'll go on to meet four and then meet five. And I'm going to try to do one video each week. And in order to do that, I'm not going to make captions anymore on my videos. Maybe I'll send them to someone else. If there's a company that'll do them for free, I don't know. I've also a added the option that anyone can add captions on my videos. So if you want to add captions on my videos, that would be really annoying because like when I did it, my computer lagged a lot. So I don't really recommend doing it because it's a kind of waste of time and yeah. But if you want to, I guess, you no, know, you can do it. But yeah. Also, I'm not going to be doing mammal score reviews anymore because um I don't know. I just didn't really like them. So yeah, I'm going to do one video probably today, and then maybe, um, I think I'll do another video today uh, for, for counting principles and binomial theorem. So yeah, so you know, I'm back. Action. Okay, so sequences and series, problem number three. Find the sum of the multiples of six from 200 to 300 which is not divisible by 9. What does that have to do with sequences? Well, okay, so you need to go from 200 to 300, and multiples of 6, and then that are not multiples of 9. So let's just try to find the sum of multiples of 6. To do this, we need to find, like, what are the multiples of 6 between 200 to 300? So what's the first multiple of 6 from 200 on? Is 200 a multiple of 6? No. Uh, we could just keep going, testing 201, 202, 203, 204. That's actually going to take a really long time. So here's a shortcut. If you divide 200 by 6, and I'm not going to do this out, I'm just going to do this, like, you can do it on paper. It's, I think it's 33 remainder 2. Yes, that's right. So it's 33 remainder 2. So we want to find the next multiple of 6. So we want to make sure that this remainder is 0. So we could just say, subtract 2, and then if we subtract 2, we get 198, that's a multiple of 6. But it's not above 200, so we want to go to the next multiple of 6. So we add 6, that's a multiple of 6. So 204 is our first multiple of 6. And that's something you, you'll just have to get used to, you'll have to like... It's kind of related to modular arithmetic, because like... And you can see in my modular arithmetic video, which I made earlier, but... 200 has a remainder of 2 in mod 6, so to get to 6, you add 4, so 2 plus 4 is 6, and then you, that you can also get a multiple of 6 that way. So this is something, you, like, if you want to do these problems in time, you'll have to get used to it, and just have to get used to thinking like that. But that's that's how you find the next multiple of 6 after a number, without just listing them all out. And then what's the last multiple of 6? So we want to find the last multiple of 6, before 300, but it actually turns out that if you divide 300 by 6, it's a multiple of 6. So 300 is a multiple of 6. So that's our last multiple of 6. So we want to sum 204 to 300. Now if you go back to the problem, um, it says find the sum of the multiples of 6 from 200 to 300, which are not divisible by 9. So what we're going to do is that we're going to sum all the multiples of 6, and then we're going to try to find the multiples of 6, which is not divisible by 9, and then subtract those out. And there's a shortcut way to do that, too. But first, we need to do this. So what is the sum of 204 to 300, and just the multiples of 6? 
So if you do this as a sequence, it's 204, and then to get to the next multiple of 6, you add 6, so it's 210. And then the next multiple of 6, you add 6, so it's 216. And then you keep going like this until you get to 300. That's an arithmetic sequence. So to find the sum, we just use the arithmetic sequence formula. And the sum formula is kind of complicated, so hopefully you already know it. But basically, you take the average of the first and last term, so 204 plus 300 divided by 2 is 252. You can do that on paper, but... Okay. And you need to find the number, the number of terms. So 300 minus 204 over 6, that's 16. That's not the number of terms, though. So let me explain this. If you have 300 and 204, and then there's gaps of 6 in between them, you have 16 gaps. That's what this found. You find that the gap between 300 and 204 is 96, and then to split that gap into s gaps of 6, which is the gap between each term, you divide that by 6. So you get 16 gaps. But let's say you hold up, like, two fingers, right? If you hold up two fingers, you have one gap in between them, but you have two fingers. So the number of gaps is not the same as the number of fingers. So if, if you have two fingers, you have one gap. If you have three fingers, you have two gaps. If you have four fingers, you have three gaps. So the number of fingers is always the number of gaps plus one. And it's actually the same thing here. The number of terms is the number of gaps plus one. So that, that might have been a bit confusing. So just... It's hard to visualize it on a number line, but like, if you draw a number line and kind of draw this out, or list out all of the terms, you'll find that there are actually 17 terms. So th that's a common mistake, not... I, I Sometimes I just count the number of gaps and I forget to add plus one. So that's a common mistake. Always remember to add plus one after you find the number of gaps in the sequence. Okay, so now we have the average and the number of terms. So to find the sum, we just multiply them, and I'm not actually, I'm actually not going to multiply them. Instead, I'm just going to, I'm going to multiply them later, because remember, we still need to find, we need to subtract out the sum of multiples of 6 that are also divisible by 9. So instead of just multiplying this now, it's actually easier to multiply it later. Okay. So what are the multiples of 6? And... Like, they're both multiples of 6 and multiples of 9. So how do you find that without listing them all out and then just checking? That's kind of complicated. So, I don't... I think the proof for this is pretty hard. But there's actually a really shortcut way to do this. If, you, if something's a multiple of 6 and it's a multiple of 9, that's the same thing as the multiple of the least common multiple of 6 and 9. So, that, this pause here, and it might take you a while to visualize, try to, like, try to list some of these terms out and see which ones are multiples of 6 and multiples of 9, so you can see that this is the pattern. Oh, so, but it, that is the pattern, that's the shortcut way to do this. If something's a multiple of A and a multiple of B, then you take the least common multiple of the two numbers. So, what's the least common multiple of 6 and 9? It's 18. So all we need to do is find the num multiples of 18 between between 200 and 300. You don't need to do some weird trick with mul you, you just you, you just do that. That that's it. So just find the least common multiple, and then find the multiples of that number between 200 and 300. So what, we just do what we did before. Okay. So what's the first multiple of 18? Um, if you divide 18 by 200, I think it's 11 remainder 2. So you add 16 to get... Because it's like we did before, you just add 16 to get the next... Because 18 minus 2 is 16. To get the next multiple is 18. So yeah. And then before 300... Uh, I think this is... 16 remainder 12? Yes, 16 rem remainder 12. So you subtract 12 from 300, and then you get 288. So we need to find um, 
the sum of all of the multiples of 18 from 216 to 288. So we just do what we did before. The average is 252 again. We just do that out on paper. And then the difference is, I mean, the number of terms is over 18 plus 1. Oh, oh, we're dividing by 18 because the it's multiples of 18. It's multiples of 18, not multiples of 6. So you always divide by the common difference. And that's, this is 72. 72 over 18 is 4, so that would be 5 terms. So 252 times 5. So that's the sum of the multiples of 18. So now we, sub we take this. Okay. Take this. And we subtract them. So this is why I said not to multiply them out, because that takes a really long time. And then if you multiply both of these out, that takes even double time. But you can actually distribute out the 252. Now the question is, if you had a meet, how would you know that beforehand? You don't. You just always don't multiply them out until the end, because it's easier. Like addition, and like these kinds of divisions, for me at least, I can do the, all of those in my head. But 252 times 17, that's really hard for me. I would have to do that on paper, or like on the screen. So I always do it at the end. So at the end, when we find simplifications like this, it saves us time at the meet. So if you have 30 seconds on the clock, that, that'll save you. So we, I distribute out the 252. 17 minus 5 is 12. So 252 times 12. That's the same as 252 times 10, plus 252 times 2. 252 times 2 is 504. If we add those together, we get... 3,024. Yes, okay. And that's it. And then we write answer. And that's it. So, yeah, I thought that was an interesting problem, simply because of that trick I was talking about. If you have a multiple of 6, and multiple of 9, uh, then it's just a multiple of 18. Because 18 is the LCM of 6 and 9, least common multiple of 6 and 9. So, yeah, that's that's a trick that actually comes in handy. I don't know. I, I don't think it comes in handy in MAML that much, but I, I'm pretty sure I've used that in other math competitions before, too. Yeah. I, didn't, I did not expect that on this ground, because that's really, like, I don't know, a number three problem. But I thought it was a good problem. It was very interesting. So yeah, that's sequences and series. And yeah, that's my math video today. I hope you enjoyed it. And... Have fun doing math!